Say Something. It's like a podcast, but it's a vodcast, so you can listen and watch. It's like news talk or sports talk, but it's life talk, so we can walk the road together. June Hunt, author, speaker, radio host, and founder of Hope for the Heart, a worldwide biblical counseling ministry, shares with us five tips to a joy-filled life. You know, maybe a fifth thing's don't be judgmental. Oh, I so love good. that. Love it. Don't pe- be pe- judgmental. Yeah, pe- people are. Life is hard, mm-hmm. and and if somebody is not doing what they need to be doing, I understand. It's so easy to judge, but instead, look beyond the fault to see the need. Thanks for joining the conversation. Here we go. She's sweet to be in the car with us, and. We wanted to ask you, as we've done a few other folks that have been in the car with us, what are your five tips to a joy-filled life? Hmm. Well, since the Bible says it is more blessed to give than receive, I remember one day I was going to be teaching on the topic of um, loneliness, and I called my mother and mother had a uh, had been a, a widow now mm-hmm. for two years, and I said, "Mother, how are you? Are you lonely?" <laughs> so I'm blurting this out, and she said, "Well, uh, am I lonely?" I said, "Well, Mom, I realize you, you know, Dad died two years ago, and I don't think I've been. Uh, please forgive me. I I feel I've not been conscientious enough, and I've been just right. feeling horrible about myself, thinking, what have I done? Not been following me up, you know, after the first few, you know, weeks and right. months. What? But I said, how, how are you? She said, well, okay, I, I yes, she had, I asked, I specifically asked, do you get lonely? And mm-hmm. she said, well, yes, honey, on occasion I get lonely, but there's always somebody who needs a friend. Mm. And I thought, oh, and I began to think about people that she would reach out to. Wow. And she said, there's always someone that you can help and turn to. Mm-hmm. And I realized mother was a giver, not a taker. Uh, now, in life, there are so givers or, and takers. There, in life, there are givers and takers. And if we're going to have a joy-filled life, it, the joy isn't um, the taking. Mm-hmm. being a taker instead the joy is giving and and you know that way you're really ministering to the hearts of other people right so that would be a huge thing look for ways to love others mm-hmm. look love and that. that means intentional mm-hmm. be intentional mm-hmm. uh, a second thing would be give the gift of wisdom now what I'm talking about is a man came by my office one time, I was a youth director, and he said, what is your purpose in life? And I went, um, I just want to do what God wants me to do. And he said, well, that's nice. I can tell it was the wrong answer, but uh, <laughs> I said, you know, said now no, think about it more seriously. Be specific. What do you want to do in life? What, that what, is your sure putting you on the spot. Yeah. I mean, that's a big question. Yeah. And and at the, and he talk, talked about this purpose. I said, well, I just want to do what God wants me to do. And again, he said, well, that's nice, yes. But And so now he, he says, well, let me ask you some questions. And one of them was, what brings you greatest joy? Oh, Jim, I love that. And I thought, at that time I was a college and career director. And I, it's like... When I share something and you see in that other person, it's like the light bulb turned on. Now, just like the, it's like, oh, and see, that still is my great right. joy. And so I, it ended up being that I established my purpose for living with this man, that I want to share the positive message of Jesus and the word, his word, with the maximum number of people possible. But I thought, how am I going to do that? I'm just in my, I guess I was 24, 25, and I thought, well, I've got, I've got to have wisdom. So I made it, I have an inner purpose to gain as much wisdom as I humanly could. Mm-hmm. And so I would look for all kinds of ways to learn that of ways that would be beneficial that were 
problems we're dealing with, um, well, like there was this Timberlawn thing, a, a, a secular entity, but they were doing free lunches where you could learn about how to help people with maladies I never even heard uh -huh. of before. And then I would learn about bipolar and all these things. And, you know, I didn't realize that that would be preparing me for my future. Oh, but the point is, pray. We can all pray, God make me wise. Mm -hmm. The whole book of wisdom, uh, which is Proverbs. Some people read that every single day. Well, they will read not the whole book, but they'll read whatever the day of the month is because if it's the third of the month and you read the third chapter, there are 31 days in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. There are many spiritual leaders who for years to be wise, they learn whatever the day of the month is, I'll go to that book of that chapter of the book of Proverbs to be wise. So pray for wisdom because, ev listen to this, everyone wants to know somebody wise. Mm -hmm. Every single person, at least one wise person that we could call, that we could, mm -hmm. could I talk with you about this? Yeah. So, so pray for wisdom and then it literally be, it be give the gift of wisdom that you are being taught by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are two points. Those are two? Those are two. That's all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that felt like 10. And, and, it's all rich. It's so rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I think about just the joy of knowing I don't have to know the future. I don't have to know oh, how I'm going to yes. get out of this mess. Yes. And so claim, claim the verse that is so significant, Jeremiah 29, 11. This is where the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now look what joy you can have there. If it's his plan, it's his pre-planned plan for you. And he says it will not harm you, but it'll give you hope in the future. So just to know that we can say, Lord, mm -hmm. I give myself to you today. Whatever you want to do in my life, I, I will be yours. In fact, many times in the morning, all I do is this. I, I just get wake up and I'll, I'll just extend my right hand and I'll just say, I give myself to you. That's mm -hmm. it. It's not a fancy prayer. It's just, Lord, I just give myself to you today. And I do it over and over. I did it the other day, but a friend was there, and I, and I thought, oh my goodness, I've not done that in front of anybody. And so the point is, give yourself to Him, knowing that He has the plan and purpose for you, and that will give you a settled joy. Yes, the peace. Mm -hmm. I love that because you said at the beginning that you don't have to know what tomorrow holds yeah. because those two words, hope and well, future, obviously, but hope is what's coming like it. And so you don't have to be in control of that. I love that. Mm -hmm. You will enjoy what my son, I have a 10 year old son who yesterday, well, I guess it was probably Tuesday this week. We're riding along on the way to school and he turns to me and says, do you know why we can't see tomorrow? And so he asked these questions <laughs> and, and I said, no, why? Like why? I didn't say no. I said, why? And he said, because we can only live today. Wow. And I thought, isn't that so for 10 year old. Well, I just let it, but see kids, I do think if you let a kid think and talk, there actually is there, there can be those very deep things yeah. because that's true. I mean, he's, Hitting something that's true, and it's yeah. exactly what you said. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about tomorrow, mm -hmm. which tomorrow does invite worry and so yeah. many things that takes yes. away peace. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Well, God, you can know God does have the solution for it. Yes. It's just many times we're trying to work it out ourselves by worrying, and it doesn't help no, us at all. No, it never helps. But, yeah. but keep yielding your will to His will. Mm -hmm. You know, a, another, a fourth point would be, and this I'm taking from my mom, accentuate the positive. Oh, I love that. Now, there, there was a song. I don't expect everyone to know it, I but know my, you, you know the song. Yes. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah. You would sing it with me. It's, it's like, you've got to act. 
accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. My mother oh, loved love that time. That. And so she and I would <laughs> do that as a, as a duet. And it was so cute because then, you know, and she was real short and, and I just loved putting my arm around her and, and she would just have these little expressions, you know, like, you know, to illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? You've got to accent. Come on, Brenda. Weigh the, the positive. Eliminate the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. Don't. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's, That's amazing. Um, you know, I have a um, sister, and it, she and her husband, uh, at the time when uh, she, my sister was an ambassador, they lived in Austria, and they said, if something happens to us, uh, Teddy, who do you want to live with? That's their little son. Not little son, but teenage son at the time. And, and he said, Aunt June. I said, Aunt June? But she's not married. Well, no, oh, but she's fun. She's yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love know, it. So, so the thing is, look for ways to make things fun. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, may, maybe a fifth thing is, don't be judgmental. Oh, That's I love so that. Love it. Don't be, be judgmental. Yeah, pe people are. Life is hard, mm -hmm. and and if somebody is not doing what they need to be doing, I understand. It's so easy to judge, but instead, look beyond the fault to see the need. Oh, look yeah, beyond the sure, fault to sure. see the need, That's good. That's good. and that way you're not going to be a negative person where. The, you know, where circumstances steal your joy. Um, and I learned that from my mother because my father was very critical, very cruel at times. And and I, I went to her one day, I said, how can you be so nice to him? And I had clenched teeth, right. I remembered. And she said, oh honey, he doesn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. If he only knew the Lord, he wouldn't be that way. That changed the whole trajectory of my thinking. I was only focusing on his fault. She was focusing on his need. Wow. He had a need for a changed life through Christ. Mm -hmm. And as such, wow. I wasn't focusing on that at all. So then I began to pray that one day he would have a changed life through Christ. I did think if I could unzip him just and put Jesus in him for a, a week. This is what I thought. If I could, you know, if he could just have Jesus in there for a week, he would not want to go back to the original state he was in. That's probably we, all of us. We we can't we can't unzip people, mm -hmm. but we can live with people seeing the presence of the Lord in us, the countenance of the Lord, the character of Christ, um, and that way they can want our Lord and Savior. That's what made the difference to me. I was a uh, junior in high school. I had no concept of authentic Christianity and I was being exposed now to people who were authentic Christians. Never seen anything like it. Didn't know what they had. I thought, well, they, they do have information about the Bible. I didn't have anything. And later I learned, well, it wasn't the information, it was the transformation. Mm. They had transformed lives. I needed a transformed life. and But whatever they had, I knew I wanted because it certainly wasn't what I had. And so uh, I began to ask and I had I had said I was a Christian. I didn't even know what that meant. Mm. You know, I was no more a Christian than a baboon. I wasn't at all a Christian, but I don't, you know, labels, are difficult uh, if you just think something that you have something that you don't have bottom line is I needed to humble my heart and receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior and um, I began to hear people do that I thought well mm -hmm. but I'm not a wino in the gutter I, why do I need to be saved um, I'm, I'm not living a horrible life of harlotry or whatever you know whatever my words were 
And then, but then I thought, but if I'm not willing to do what God wants me to do, I, I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to be prideful. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, I'll give it a try. And so I prayed a very simple prayer. God, I realize that I've chosen wrong. Uh, please forgive me for the times I've chosen wrong. I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my life, to take control of my life, to enable me to do whatever you want me to do. In your name I pray, amen. That was the maximum prayer I could pray. I wasn't, I didn't know how to pray out loud. I didn't know anything, but I did want what I was told that would make a difference, that Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship with Christ. And I didn't have a relationship. I didn't know about that. And I thank God there were teenagers that exposed me to what I call today authentic Christianity. Mm -hmm. And it was life changing for me. Mm -hmm. Well, those are some five great points. Yes. I, I think that. it's more than five. I'm really, I'm really, yes, <laughs> that was yes. so rich. Yes. It was like about 25, well, 50. And, and I think because, um, June, you have uh, room to talk on this subject. Mm -hmm. you, when you, when you maybe meet you now and see you now, there is so much joy that comes from you. But um, your circumstances didn't start that way. It's not... Um, just because everything in your life has gone wonderfully, that you can have joy, but that you can speak um, with authority uh, about what the Lord has done in your life and brought you that joy. And so I love that you shared that with us and they, they weren't sugar-coated whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you so much for that. Yes, that beautiful hope, <laughs> your hope for the heart. Mm -hmm. Well, and that so. is it. If you think my situation is hopeless, just think of it this way. There's no hopeless person. There are only people who have grown hopeless about the future. Oh, that's so good. So there is hope for you. So don't be confined by it. And don't be a prisoner of the past. Just allow the Lord to take control of your life, and he will take over from there. That's good. Thank, Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so what welcome. What a treat. It's a joy. And I see I'm being summoned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, June. Thanks again for joining the conversation. We love hanging out with you guys. Want to stay connected? Like or follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Instagram. See you next time on Say Something.